Hello, my name is Julian Edgar and I'm the author of the book you see in front of you, Tuning Programmable Engine Management. It's just a small book, but it's really aimed at people who are tuning their car themselves and primarily tuning on the road. In another video, I looked at lean cruise parameters. What parameters had to be present before you could slide the car into lean cruise? Things like oil temperature, coolant temperature, manifold pressure, engine speed, what gear you were in, things of that sort. In this video, I want to talk about what parameters you actually change in the tuning. Now, I'm talking about a Motec M400, but I don't want to concentrate on that. I want to talk about the logic behind the decisions that I made when I was doing that tuning. So let's have a look. All the maps, as I say, are going to be from an M400, but I want you to think about the ideas rather than the, the sort of software that you're actually looking at. Okay, so let's have a look at a Lambda Correction map. Lambda Correction is how I actually change the fueling in lean cruise and that is the ECU provides a lambda correction it then watches the output of the oxygen sensor and slides the air fuel ratios to that degree of leanness that's being requested so over here on my left you'll have to excuse me if I look away from you we've got two columns we've got naught naught which is just standard air fuel ratios as determined by the main fuel map and obviously its corrections and to its right we've got the point one now point one is how it's ended up being referred to as lean cruise in these maps so any of the correction values in point one are the lean cruise correction values on the vertical column we've got manifold pressure starting at 10 throttle off uh, overrun going right through to 110, so 10 kilopascals boost. This is a turbo car, but I don't run lean cruise over 10 kilopascals boost. Now, we've got correction factors in here. So for example, we've got a correction factor of 0.5. What does that mean? Well, if the air fuel ratio at stoichiometric is 14.7 to one, half of 14.7 added to 14.7 is the new air fuel ratio. So you can see where it's got 0.5 lambda correction, I'm actually running about 21 to one air fuel ratio. Now the important thing though, is not to worry about the fact that the MoTeC system uses a lambda correction. The important thing to look at is the fact that the amount of lean cruise depends on load. At 110 kilopascals, there is no lean cruise. Lean cruise occurs at a maximum of 90, 80, and 70 kilopascals. At lower loads, it actually isn't as lean because then I can slide from throttle off back onto throttle on without having to go through such a lean patch. So you actually change the degree of leanness in lean cruise depending on the actual load the engine is withstanding. Okay, so what about ignition timing? Now, as soon as you go leaner in air fuel ratios, the burn takes longer, so you need a more advanced timing. So how much more advanced? Now, this might blow your mind. Remember, I am running very lean, lean cruise, 21 to one up to, and if we have a look at the chart over here, we can see we've got the same um, headings, naught, which is standard, 0.1, which means we're in lean cruise, and we've got the same uh, vertical axis with manifold pressure, from 10 to 110, always use the same axes, the same data on both the, the uh, correction for fuel and ignition, don't have a different vertical axis. And you can see that these are timing advances that are added to the timing advance that's already there in the main ignition map. So you can see that when I'm running a 0.5 lambda correction, in other words, 21 to one air fuel ratio, I am adding an additional 23 degrees of timing. Now you might think that's just absolutely crazy. It doesn't detonate. It does produce more power with that ignition timing advance. And critically, it doesn't stumble. If you run really lean without radically changing the timing, you'll find you get a lot of engine stumbles and flat spots. Does adding even more timing make things better? No, it doesn't. But with the 23 degrees of ignition timing advance on top of the standard advance, I'm sometimes running 46, 48, 50 degrees of advance, total advance. So the ignition timing must be changed if you are running leaner air fuel ratios in lean cruise. Okay, and now there's the final one. And this is the one that took me personally the longest to understand, the longest to enact, and is really the one that makes all the difference to drivability when you're running in lean, lean cruise. What am I talking about? I'm talking about fuel acceleration enrichment. 
Now, if we have a look at the table over here, we've got it in throttle percentage, okay? Throttle position percentage, not manifold pressure. And I, I certainly tried manifold pressure, but it really needs throttle position percentage because it's you who is moving the throttle and you who want that throttle response. So up the top on this axis, we've got naught naught, and naught naught, as we have said before, uh, is the standard uh, uh, car running in normal mode. And you can see that I've got uh, 15 uh, units of acceleration enrichment most of the way through uh, in normal mode, and that works quite nicely. So how much extra enrichment do I have when I'm in lean cruise? Now this is gonna blow your mind, it certainly blew mine. I have up to 200 units of acceleration enrichment compared with 10 or 15 when the car's running normal mixtures. Now, that's really, really important because when you're running in lean cruise and you move your foot, you put your foot down, if it stays at really lean cruise, you'll have no throttle response. The car will feel doughy, the car will feel really, really terrible. But because you're starting from such a lean beginning, putting a normal amount of throttle enrichment in is just way, way insufficient. You need something like up to 20 times the normal amount of fuel enrichment for throttle response. Now, you can see that as the load goes up, as you get closer to 100% throttle, the amount of throttle enrichment isn't required to be so great, but it's still uh, seven or eight times what it would be normally if you weren't in lean cruise. So we've got those three things. We've got the amount of fuel that you need to take out to be in lane cruise, and that needs to be proportional to load as measured by manifold pressure. We've got the amount of ignition timing that you need to additionally have on top of your normal ignition advance, and that also should be correlated to load. So the amount of fuel that you're taking out is correlated to the amount of ignition timing you are putting in. And then that third parameter, and that is throttle enrichment, and that needs to be related not to manifold pressure, but to actual throttle position. And the key thing to understand is you need a massive amount of throttle enrichment if you are to have a car that will drive in lean cruise completely seamlessly. Now, of course, when you move your foot, it's, it's effectively not in lean cruise because you're adding all that extra fuel, but as soon as you stop moving your foot, it slides straight back into lean cruise. And so if you're driving along in fifth gear, and in my car, the Honda Insight, I might be running 21 to one air fuel ratio, and I have a tiny hill to, ri to, to climb, to, to, to rise and go over, then I just move my foot down a fraction, it might drop back to 14 to one or 15 to one. That gives the response that I want, but as soon as I'm over that rise, and that rise might be only momentary, it's already straight back to its lean cruise because it was only associated, the mixture enrichment was only associated with that throttle movement. Those are the three things that you really have to play with. And it's that last one, throttle enrichment, that it took me years to actually work out how absolutely important it was. Yeah, it's obvious in retrospect, isn't it? But it's not so obvious when you're actually doing it. I think lean cruise tuning is, is another whole ball game for tuning. I find it immensely challenging and exciting. Maximum power, you just pour in a lot of fuel and make sure it's not detonating with as much advance as you want. But with lean cruise, you're juggling all the time to, to get drivability and still get that fuel economy. My name's Julian Edgar. The book's called Tuning Programmable Engine Management. Thank you.